So today we went to Retro Rides Gathering and we spent all day on the hill and we got loads and loads of video, which is awesome. Yeah, it looks like we're probably going to have to split this one into a three-parter because there is that much footage for you. Yeah, there's nearly an hour's worth just of hill climb footage and we talked to some drivers as well. So without much further ado, let's just get right into it. The Retro Ride Summer Gathering is a lot more than just a hill climb. There's a whole great big show bolted on the side of it where loads and loads of visitors park up their retro cars. Yeah, we could have done a whole show just on its own, going around and looking at just what was in the retro parking because it is massive. There's about 1,500 cars in there. It's huge. A lot of the show is made up of car clubs whose members have brought their cars along to put on display. Yep, one of the main ones that we saw there quite near the entrance was the Young Retro Motor Club. So these guys are a fairly big, relatively young, but well-developing group on Facebook. They're not really based anywhere in particular. It's nationwide, and a lot of the guys don't even know each other personally, but they all kind of club together, bring all their rides to this and other events. It's pretty cool. And it's nice to see other young people getting in on the classic car scene. There's loads of other club stands. Some are based on specific model group, like this group of VW June buggies. Some areas of the show are made up of individuals who've just come out and joined up together. They don't know each other, but they're just parking up in the show so everybody can see what they've brought. And it's a fascinating walk around. We covered maybe 25%, maybe a third if we're lucky, of the whole retro parking area, and we barely scratched the surface before we went back to the track. So, let's go back there now.
Hi, my name is Trevor Culler and the car is uh, Thunder Saloon Sapphire and quite a well-known beast in its day. Hi, oh, yeah, I had the car since 2003 and uh, it was built by another guy named Dave Thomas. He had a um, Ford dealership that was built to promote the Sapphire um, originally. So he's got the radiator in the boot and air intakes on the side, running about 500 horse. It's got get drag touring car gearbox, live rear axle instead of uh, independent. I raced it in Thunder Saloons, uh, done modified saloons, and there's a few other series that we'll do. But the guy who built it originally, he'd had it uh, in first position in Class A of Thunder Saloons, so in 2003. So it done really well in its time. Um, but it's very lightweight, 1160 kilos, just a little bit less than that. And um, it's quite a quick car, 500 horse. Uh, as I say, rear drive with a live axle goes really well. Not suited to hill climb though, unfortunately. <laughs> We're getting off the line, uh, it's really high geared. First gear is really high, last week in the first corner, and then we're into second and boosting up the hill. So, don't need any more gears because it's geared for about 160, 170 mile an hour. So, and we're only fetching up about 120 up here, I suppose, something like that. So, yeah, all the same, quick car, good fun factor. Only here really to try it out because it's a brand new engine built by Jeff Page. Um, he's just. Uh, sort of signed that off and we tested it, dynoed it and here it is. Uh, it's his first day out really.
I'm David. I'm Keith. Um, we're behind uh, the Retro Rides events. Uh, Retro Rides itself originally is an online forum, and then we were going to events in bigger and bigger amounts, and eventually we ended up with 150 cars at one event and decided that perhaps we should do our own. And that's we, when I hooked up with Keith to make that happen. And we had a conversation along the lines of the kind of car show that we'd like to go to doesn't exist. So we should do a car show like this. And um, it had club stands and cars coming from overseas and guests and a point to point sprint and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's kind of, this is the evolution of that over the past 12, 12 13. 13 years of uh, doing events. This is where we're at. Um, so we've ended up at Shelsey Walsh about four or five years ago. Five, five years now. It's a beautiful venue. It's a great track to drive on. Um, it's a steep hill for people that want to walk up it, but uh, it's just a wonderful place to be and have a bunch of cool yeah. cars and send them up a hill and do stupid things. It's nicely set out in the countryside, which gives um, people a nice drive to get to. It's a big, big space for us to feature, fit uh, loads of um, guest cars, club cars, um, the general public, and we can expand over the farmer's fields. It's a lovely yeah. setting. Previous venues, we just just burst at the seams and then had to move on and then burst at the seams and had to move on. We haven't yet burst the seams of uh, Shelsley Walsh. Um, although if we keep growing the way we are... We might come sooner we, than we, might, we, we might have to get them to get some more fields. We grow kind of 15 to 20 percent. We have, you know, around 5,000 people here um, on a day, on a sunny Sunday in August in near Worcester. Um, Got about 1,500, 1,600 cars in that field, plus another 100 in here. Um, and then whatever was in the... Uh, the day parking. Um, we have grown almost by word of mouth. So we do a bit of advertising, a little bit of Facebooky type stuff, but it's pretty much people come to the event, they enjoy the event, they tell their friends to come to the event, and it's just every year another 15, 20% decide to come along. The dream is, <laughs> my dream, is a uh, two day event uh, with a competition day on the Saturday in a uh, shootout manner, which is like sudden death. So you basically, you, in the afternoon, you'd have to post your times and you'd have to be the fastest in that go um, because no one runs hill climbs like that. And I want to run hill climb like that. Um, and then on the Sunday, I think we kind of got it pretty right. We yeah. always want to tweak a little bit more. There's loads of stuff we go away with and tweak and make a little bit better. And we never want to stop doing that. Um, but I think that, um, we kind of broadly got it right on the Sunday, so now we add in another day, and then it's kind of getting that right over the years. We kind of skirted with a two-day event once upon a time, um, and having kind of a race-style entertainment on the Saturday, and then more of a laid-back kind of club-orientated um, kind of feel on the Sunday, well, it was a really good fit, so... Because um, we were a bit nervous. The first year we ran an event, we did kind of this, a two -day but, weekend but over event. two days, um, and neither of us really remember any of it. Yeah, so uh, we thought we'll never not we'll never do that again. So, but now we're kind of able to do this kind of thing, and it's grown to a size where it kind of has, it almost demands it now. Um, and, and we know that we can make it happen, you know, quite easily. We know the venue well. We know the people that come. Um, yeah, and it would work really, really well here. Yeah, definitely. Well, that wraps this up, the first of our three-part special on the Retro Ride Summer Gathering 2019. Yep, thanks everybody that we spoke to today. It's been a blast. We'll definitely be going back. Maybe take one of our cars next time. Maybe. Speaking of, if you'd like to have a look at any of our project threads on the Thunderbird, the SD1, the Golf, or our mid-engine kit car, go and have a look at our project, subscribe to the channel, and if you haven't already checked out Retro Ride's forum, go and have a look there, because they've got some fantastic build logs on that as well. Thanks for watching.